What are your most disturbing unsettling memories from your childhood? My mother suddenly screaming in the middle of the night then dragging my sister and me from our beds into the bathroom and locking the door behind her. Slamming her bible against the door and turning off the light then squeezing the two of us to her chest while telling us we all had to pray because a demon was outside. Roaming around our apartment. Looking to drag us into hell. Hysteria. Tears. Frantic prayers. Bone deep terror. I was 10 or 11. I think. Still get shaky remembering it. Wish I could erase it from my head. Back when I was in high school. My assistant principal had to walk me to my car to grab something from it that I forgot. He seemed totally fine. We were chatting and he told me to have a good afternoon. He shot and killed his wife and killed himself that same night. It bothers me that I didn't pick up on something being wrong. I couldn't have done or said anything. But it still occupies more headspace than I care to admit many years later. Watching my father die and not being old enough to help or understand what was happening. Then the next day being interviewed by the coroner to find out exactly where the hands were on the clock when daddy fell down. Poking a dead body lying in the gutter with a stick. I was too young to understand what I was doing. I don't remember feeling very scared. Either. I never told my parents. But my older brothers have confirmed to me that it actually did happen. Saw my gym teacher sexually assaulting my middle school crush in the gym office. I was scared and didn't say anything. The gym teacher was caught eventually with another accident. But I still think about her from time to time and it fills me with shame that I was such a coward. You saw an actual monster. One that held authority and then self-preservation kicked in. If you had intervened he could have just lied his way out and then started be extra careful to not get caught. Please be kind to yourself. I walked into my sister's room when I was 11. Her and our cousin were passed out on the floor in piles of vomit. Pill bottles were laying near them. There was blood all over the walls and razor blades. They didn't die. But part of me did. I was at a friend's house and we went to a deep creek to catch frogs and turtles. From the top of the bank we spotted a swollen dead deer covered in maggots. My friend's little brother pushed me off of the bank and I landed on the deer. It burst and kind of deflated under me. And I just laid there crying and throwing up until my friend's parents came and got me. They hosed me down in the driveway and tossed me in their pool that they had just chlorinated. Super great. Was home alone once as a young kid. It was summer so I was outside in my hammock reading Percy Jackson. We didn't have any closed neighbors because we lived in the middle of nowhere. Anyway. I'm sitting there closed up in my hammock when I hear a car. Thinking it was my parents getting home. I popped my head out of the hammock and went to greet them. Turned out to be a white van with two middle aged guys in it. I, being the dumb kid I was, said hello. The guys were kinda shocked and I then asked them if they wanted to talk to my parents. And I motioned to the cars behind our house. Now from the road you can't see but we have two other cars parked behind our house that were our families and they must have thought no one was home cause there were no cars in the front. Anyway I don't remember exactly what they said but they made an excuse and jumped back in their car and zoomed away. Didn't realize how terrified I was till after they left. Never felt the same home alone ever again. Friendly stranger stopped me at Disneyland and followed my family around for a while. Asked where we were staying. And I don't know any better as a kid. So I told them. Dude showed up with a friend at the hotel pool waiting for me. I thought to call out to the guy. But my instincts made me hold back. Still don't know if that was a child trafficker to this day. Me and my cousins were playing outside when we were around 10-12 years old. Some dude stopped to ask directions and one of my cousins started walking towards him. Had an immediate bad feeling and went and grabbed my cousin. At that age I was already taller than the guy and probably outweighed him by about 20 pounds. Got back into the car real quick when he saw me, not like I was tough. Just a big ass kid. Going over to a friend's house when I was maybe 10 and I caught him and his dad having a loud argument at the garage. I hid behind a nearby trash can and saw the dad pull out a gun and actually shoot his son in the leg. 
I freaked out and ran home to tell my parents but nobody believed me until the police and ambulance showed up. It's hard to explain but I saw the bullet penetrate his leg in what felt like slow motion. It still comes to mind every now and then. Edit. Kid was eventually fine. Never saw the dad again. I don't remember if any arrests were made. Got an iPhone 4 when I turned 14 on Christmas. My dad supposedly used it before I got it. Looked onto the recently deleted photos to find over 10 pictures of my dad's genitals with his face also being in them. My mom gave me her phone to keep because she had a new one and I also adopted all of her 5. 000 photos. I went through the photos and deleted way too many nudes. I had accidentally overlooked a lot of them. So 2 years later. I finally got rid of all of them. I don't think there are any left but I'm too scared to go through my photos to make sure. Watched a guy bleed out in front of me while hanging from a nail that caught him while he was falling. I don't know what haunts me more. The sound of his screams turning to crying. And then silence. Or the sight of the blood pooling up at my feet. I was 8 and I can still see it. And hear it. Like it was yesterday. Edit. Since it's being asked I'll add some details. Basically I grew up going to a farm with my father where he worked and one of the farmer's older sons was up on top of their new chicken coop tending to the mesh wiring and fell through the mesh. Catching on a nail on the way down. He hung there for a while. I just stood there in shock. Didn't really have a clue what was happening really. He passed before they were able to get him down. I remember me and my brother sitting on the couch crying as we watched our parents yelling at the top of their lungs and chasing each other around the apartment threatening to kill one another. How hard it was to get any kind of love from my childhood. The things I used to sew for just eye contact as I spoke to my mother is pathetic. We were always a burden in my mother's life and we suffered for that in a lot of different ways. That's so fked up. I'm sure you know by now. At least I hope you do. That you're fking awesome and she's the one with the problem. Much love homie. My dad telling me to take my little sister outside so he could shoot and kill my stepmom's dog. Having to crawl out my bedroom window and run to a neighbor oe night to call an ambulance for my mother. Who had tried to kill herself because she couldn't handle staying with her abusive ex anymore. I was 10. Even better. My BTCH of a teacher treating my like sh for missing a bit of school the next day to go see her in the hospital, and yes. The teacher knew the reason. Police coming to arrest my dad. Everyone crying. My mom being taken away in an ambulance. In first grade. My teacher would beat the students pretty bad. This was 1991 in New York City. She was an older Jewish woman. And she would only hit the non-white students. I'm non-white. And I was terrified of her. I was the smart. Quiet kid. So I managed to fly under her radar. But I did get slapped in the back really hard one time because I raised my hand to ask for permission to use the bathroom. The worst beating we saw happened one morning when we were lining up to go to the science workshop. We had to line up in pairs and hold hands. This black boy named Travis wanted to partner with the cute girl in the class that everyone had a crush on. He then kissed her on the cheek. Which made all the kids start giggling. The teacher saw this and rushed over. She picked up Travis and body slammed him on the floor. Then she grabbed a wooden yardstick and cracked it over his head a couple times. Everyone started to cry when we saw this. Even the cute girl. It was one of the most violent things I had ever seen in my childhood. Taking a shortcut through the park at dusk. No one around but this large dude ahead. The man turned his head and saw me and then reduced his pace. I felt anxious but didn't really know how to react so I kept my pace and so we ended up walking in parallel. As I passed him by from the corner of my eye I saw him slowly put on these black gloves. Which even then I thought was weird because it wasn't a cold day. The man was now behind me but keeping my pace. Catching up with me and I still didn't know what to do. At the point I was about to panic two women pushing their kids and strollers came into view and the man dropped back and I sped out the park. I was too embarrassed to bring up something that made me look weak to my family. A few weeks later a child was abducted in our area. 
the look in my mom's eyes when she makes bleach and vinegar in a bucket and lock me in an unventilated room with it. She knew exactly what she was doing. Folks joke around saying gingers have no souls. And that's generally bullshit. But that one. I've never known her to possess one of her own. She's only ever looked alive when she was consuming someone else's. As a child. I'd play with Barbies and recreate scenarios of a bad guy kidnapping Barbie and Barbie being saved. Except the kidnapping involved Barbie being tortured by pretending to drown her. Hanging her by the neck with a shoelace. And piling rocks on her to smash her to death. I'm mentally stable right now. I swear. Worst is definitely when the babysitter forced my brother and I to uh, pay each other, the oldest of the two of us was 8, while she filmed. Second worst is the crunch sound that happened when I gave a friend in 4th grade permanent brain damage by going sideways on a wooden swing set. He wound up graduating high school almost a decade after the rest of us did. Finding the love letter my dad wrote to my now stepmom while he was still married to my mom. He talked to me that night. Said they were separating. And that he'd fallen in love with another woman. I remember him asking me if I picked up on clues. I said I had noticed him sleeping downstairs on the couch. The next 10 years were ugly in my family as my parents had one of the worst divorces. And fighting over custody of my younger brother. This was almost 25 years ago when I was 13. It is not something you forget easily. My 7th grade teacher was raped and stabbed in her classroom early morning while getting ready for the school day to begin. The rapist ended up being my best friend's next door neighbor. He had borrowed his PlayStation controller before the incident. So he never got it back. Age 13. I was caught burning individual pages of the phone book out my window. I wasn't doing anything explicitly dangerous. But I shouldn't have been doing it. Teenage me thought fire was cool. Dad walks in. Snatches me up by the shirt and basically drags me to our staircase. I was told to grab each handrail. You think fire is so f-king cool? Here. Get real up close and personal with it. And don't f-king move. And he proceeded to light the bottom of my t-shirt on fire. As it slowly crept up he shouted more shit at me that I can't totally recall because my focus was on the fire moving towards my face and keeping the shirt off my body. Flame was up to about my sternum and he grabbed a collar. Tore it off and tossed it to the floor stomping it out. I was then told to get out of his sight. There are a plethora of memories I could post on this question but this is the one that probably still bothers me the most as a grown adult. I hate that man more and more every day. Probably my dad slamming me against a wall after a brutal beating and then making me lie to dives about it after the school saw my injuries when I was around 8. It begins at McDonald's. It's me age 3 and my big sister grabbing lunch together. My shoes are purple and have Disney characters on them. I'm pretty sure they have Jasmine from Aladdin on them. And I love that fear purple. We finish our food and come home and there is something wrong with mom. Her lips are bluish purple. The same color as my sandals. She OD'd and dad wasn't home. Someone called paramedics. And I remember them putting her on a bright reddish orange stretcher. They made me wait in a back bedroom but I saw them doing medical stuff. Ah and that's my first childhood memory. I have a frickin' novel's worth. First my mother is a pedophile. Second I was involved with the Richmond London child abuse scandal which resulted in CP floating around online of me as a child. Third my best friend died when I was 15 as a result of his girlfriend falsely claiming he raped her. And fourth when I was 14 I met my dad for the first time only to find out he had been told I was dead and lived in mourning until the day he got a call that I was in custody of social services and my mother's family had named him as my father. A group of my classmates bullying the kid with a handicap. Had him in a four square game and were just dunking on him. One of the few times I've ever stood up to bullies. Although now that I like back it was not in a strong enough way. When I was about 5. My older cousin's best friend killed someone. My cousin helped him hide for a couple days. Cops got tipped off. Warrant was issued. And with my cousin being a multiple time felon himself. Decided to run as well. At one point. 
He came to my parents house to try talking with my dad. My dad didn't want to hear it. And threatened to call the cops. Cousin took off. Got into a police chase. Drove on the wrong side of one of our main roads. Hit a car. Then flipped his car over a guardrail into the river. I was completely oblivious to everything. I just remember my dad screaming at my cousin. Found out all this stuff later. And it was a huge what the fck moment. My cousin did like 15 years in prison. Edit. Spelling. When my mom stopped me from using a rag her boyfriend used. I refused to reuse any towels or rags afterwards. It came straight out of the dyer or back of linen closet. I stopped inviting friends over to my house as a kid because my dad kept a washcloth on the bathroom counter to wipe himself after he peed and I didn't want to have to explain my dad's piss rag to them. My dad getting mad at my brother and I at the dinner table. Followed by him getting up. Getting a shotgun and asking us if we wanted him to do it. My 3 year old brother is sobbing as we plead for him to put the gun down. He cocked it and put the gun barrel in his mouth. Screamed a little and then pulled it out. Laid it next to him on his bed and went to sleep for a few days. I went outside into my backyard and found a young girl kneeling over something. I introduced myself and asked what she was doing. She had cut up a baby bird and ripped off its wings. She told me she wanted to see what was inside. Not that disturbing or unsettling but taking care of your parents when they get too high on pills. IDK if that's the right term but it's weird having to be the parent to your parent. It happened very rarely but I never really liked it. My mom has been sober for a year and a half now so it's not a problem anymore. The strange man in my house in the middle of the night. I woke up to piece or something I rarely ever do so and went into the hallway. Where I saw the silhouette of a man I did not recognize standing at the top of the steps staring back at me. I'd like to say I screamed. But I just stood there. Thankfully. My father has also woken up. Came out. And yelled at me to go back in my room and lock the door. The fact that someone we didn't know could just walk into our house in the middle of the night terrified me. It would be years before I realized if he was just burgling us. He would have stayed downstairs. I hate to think about why he broke in that night. Watching a movie called Marie and Max. The plot follows a little Australian girl, Marie, who becomes pen pal with Max. Max is a grown adult with severe psychological issues living in NY. At the end of the movie, Marie is all grown up and decide to go visit Max. Only to find him dead. Hanging in his apartment. That claymation gave me nightmares. I was molested by a group of older kids when I was 4. They made me think it was just some fun game and they got so far into my head that I was convinced that the entire thing was my fault for years thinking it was entirely on me because I let it happen. That has to be the most disturbing memory that happened to me. It still makes me as uncomfortable now as it did when it happened. I was 18 years old and sleeping. I woke up in a fright after hearing someone with a distinctly feminine voice talk to me outside of my window. This was around 5 am. I could hear someone talking. I went to my window to check and no one was there. I then received a phone call from a close friend at the time, lived an hour south, telling me her cousin had been found dead in a ditch. Really horrifying experience. 